Right, well, uh, good evening. This is, I think, Restart Sailing Show 31, I think, John. We're sort of running out of fingers to count on, aren't we? Yeah, but it, it's fantastic because we've got a lot more sailing to be talking about now. If we think where we were last year, uh, I think the future's looking very bright and it's so nice to, to chat to people. It, I think we set a trend. We had two people on the last show. We've got two people on this show. So, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. onwards and upwards. That's your numbers. So, yeah, the three stages are, are working well. And I think uh, encapsulating what it's all about from the, uh, you know, the, the local to the more national to the international. Which, uh, yeah, there's lots of international going on. And uh, there's around 50 days that are very big international. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we're all looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, that will uh, give it a lot of good feel-good factor, I think, won't it? <laughs> yeah, something to bring all the countries together. Yeah, right, okay. So let's uh, move on to a uh, number of active cases, John. Yeah, just quickly whizzing through, I think a picture says a thousand words, and that's pretty clear that the number of active cases in the United Kingdom is now very, very uh, small. Um, and if we flick on to Portugal, um, it's actually very similar. It's just a different scale. Um, so that's uh, been the go-to country during the pandemic. In fact, that's actually where I am. It's sunny Villamora, um, even though I just need a bit of a bit of a wash. But yeah, getting quite a tan for for May time. And you can see there were some big peaks, but um, things are looking very healthy. I didn't actually put on anything for Japan. Uh, this year, uh, sorry, this show, um, because um, I think probably this year in June, you're going to get a significant drop in COVID numbers, as opposed to last year. Unfortunately, in June, they had the um, they had a wave, which was why the Olympic Games was cancelled. But I do expect numbers to drop significantly in June, and we'll put that in the next show. And the only issue is that the countries which have low vaccination, they are struggling to open um, if you think about um, New Zealand and Australia and to a certain extent uh, Japan whereas uh, UK looks like we're on track for proper proper opening up next yeah. month and uh, rumour has it it might be a sunny bank holiday so <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be a first <laughs> <laughs> yes right okay so uh Stepping through, so yeah, they uh, missed a few steps out there, but we're sort of uh, well into the steps, aren't we? Heading towards the uh, 21st of June, <laughs> yeah. And we'll have a show shortly after that date, so we can hopefully review everything. But maybe there'll be not much to talk about apart from sailing, yeah. yeah. Well, fingers crossed, although a bit of confusion this week over some of the Indian variants and possible lockdowns, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, without getting into too much, I think it's it's sad that the people who got affected that, by that were basically the people who hadn't been vaccinated. And I think that's a very good lesson to, to go out and get your jab as soon as you can. Uh, our two guests today are probably the, the very few people in the country who hasn't had the offer. Now we're looking at over 30s. So, um, yeah, go and get it done because uh, it's it's not only uh, protecting your own personal health, but it protects everybody. Well, yes, I mean, definitely showing that the infection rates go down, doesn't it, with the, with the vaccine. And uh, yeah. the REA have been keeping us really up to pace with all the uh, translation into sales speak, haven't they, uh, saving speak? Yeah, and that, that file, it's on the Restart Sailing group. So if anyone wants to, to download it or to forward the picture or whatever, it's there to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Uh, some good work being done there and uh, yeah organized sailing starting to get back so i think uh certainly up to national championship level it's looking quite good isn't it absolutely <laughs> yeah but i think there's still a few doubts on internationals because i think i saw that the uk world championships probably not going to happen and things like that it really depends well. it really depends on the country um basically those that have covid numbers have, have proved that you can run these regattas in a, in a safe way if you look at uh, japan for example it's not only that um uh, there'll be a significant drop in june it's actually the event can be run with negligible impact to public health because we run so many events and sailing is a sport we've got to be one of the best because we're extremely well ventilated and quite distant when we're competing yeah, I think it's more the certainty of getting the strong number of entries from as many countries as possible. I think that's probably the biggest yeah. challenge now, isn't it? Not not the event being able to go ahead. It's just the uh, the numbers game, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a difficult one with world championships. If the Australian or, or Kiwi sailors, which may be some of the top sailors in the class, can't get there, is it fair to call it a world championship? Uh, with the Olympics, they've been very good. All the um, 
uh, countries can get vaccinated because the IOC has actually given uh, Pfizer uh, to those countries who wouldn't be vaccinating athletes. So, you know, 99% of athletes will be double dosed before they even arrive. But uh, I think it's time to, to chat to some 2024 perspectives. Oh, you came very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's Peter, Peter and Ryan. Lovely to see you. Uh, a very obviously uh, mixed 470. Yeah, Hi. Hey. Sorry, I so, had to. Um, my oh no! So we, <laughs> this is just to show you that it is recorded live, right. and we have these uh, with these technical right. issues. Here we go. <laughs> but as a as a pair, you spent a lot of time in Villamora as well. Um, but can you just go back and tell us a little bit about how um, your sailing career started? I don't know if you'll thank me for, for saying this, but Ben Nichols shared some photos with me of some very young optimist sailors who have a striking resemblance to you two. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, we both, uh, both started off in Livingston, actually. Um, I was started a bit before Beats, probably. Um, but there's a little uh, lake called Sultans. So... Sort of I've, just, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there, and it's a wonderful place. It's a place. pond. It's definitely a lake. Is a, yes, <laughs> that's what I was trying yeah, to yeah, say. Lake is stretching. <laughs> Basically, to begin with, you the two parents will stand either end, and they turn you around once you get to them. But it's quite fun. They're still out there in their wadens, and that's quite good for starting off. Then we went into four twenties. Ryan, I think, left four twenties when I got in but I did I did about four years in four twenties after that uh, after I moved out of Oppies with my best friend Millie. Um, and then when I finished four twenties in Villamora actually was our last event at the Worlds. Um, I was wanting to go into four seventies but obviously it was going mixed and so I couldn't sail with Millie. Also we were not really the right size to go into the four seventy and Brian had just stopped sailing with his um, helm and Johnny, our coach, who coached both of us, me in 420 and Brian in the 470, um, suggested that we team up. And so we just like, yeah. The, the yeah, yeah. And, as, and as they say, the rest is the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, our first event I was actually straight after the 420 world. So I went and met Ryan there in Italy. I flew straight from Lamora to Italy. And, and, we had um maybe ryan could tell us what you had sorry just lost you there uh, <laughs> what, what was that uh so that was in villa garcia it was a junior oh Vita had just done the worlds obviously um and then we uh i drove all the kit out and met Vita there a few days later um and we started training <laughs> Um, perfect. And in the more recent uh, future, can you just tell us about some of your success in Villamora? Um, it's, a, it's sort of a brand new class, mixed um, 470, but the way the Olympic cycles have gone, it's not that long to 2024. Yeah, it's actually really exciting to have um, a mixed fleet racing by itself because obviously we've been uh, mixed in with the men's class for um, a while. I mean, we haven't had many events, but it's good just to have the mixed fleet separated and see who our comp some of our competition is going to be going forwards for the 2024 cycle. And now the games is just around the corner, so we're close to all the new teams popping up probably in about like September time. Uh, events like Princess Sphere and things will have a pretty solid fleet, and it's really exciting that the 470 is changing its dynamics, so there is a chance now for teams like us and other mixed teams to have a shot at that 2024 games. Yeah, no, I hope it's going to open it up. It's funny, for an old man like me, it seems very strange having Palmer in October. That's going to yeah. take some years used to. <laughs> yeah. But my yeah. understanding, the last event in Villamora, which is the Europeans, after the, the class voted to, to have it there, I think that's the right way around, you were the biggest fleet. The mix was the biggest fleet. Yeah, is we that were correct? the biggest fleet. Yeah, no, yeah. really cool, actually. Um, yeah, I guess... Quite a lot of people have stopped now, so 
who I all teamed up and quite a lot of new pairings have come together, which is cool as well. Yeah, even between the Worlds and Europeans, it was such a big change. And and that was a very, very small gap. How, how long was it between the two championships? You must be speaking Portuguese by now. <laughs> Not by. <laughs> um, really? <laughs> We know Obrigada. I can say Obrigada. <laughs> well, that's always helpful. Keep, keep the locals happy. Yeah, um, um, that was four weeks, and yeah. there was um, so many new teams arose. I think there was twenty votes at Worlds and thirty-six at Euros. I think, but yeah, it was really fun. And and I'm exciting. sure there's going to be more teams coming in. But just just talk a, a little bit about the 470 for people who, who don't know. It's maybe a boat that uh, we see an awful lot on international competition, but maybe not so much around the, the sailing clubs of the UK. So just to say it's the big sister of a, of a 420, perhaps that's not giving it due justice. <laughs> it's a lot more, a uh, lot trickier. It's about absolutely more stable than a 420, but... It requires quite sort of a high level of precision. There's a lot of setup that goes involved with it. Um, yeah. And obviously. I was going to say, are you enjoying all the boat work? Because we Ryan, often Ryan the boat loves parts. it. Ryan loves it. I, don't <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, no, it's, but, yeah. You have to keep on top of it. It is one of those boats which uh, is sort of an ongoing list. It never stops. Uh, I have to rein him in. You've got, to, you've got to keep checking the bottom of your boat and the slot gasket so you don't have to do it on the water. Is that, yeah. is that right? I, I always used to joke, every time I go in the 470 boat park, there's at least one on its side. Probably us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was, I think, one of the main differences when I moved out of 420s was um, the, yeah, like the technical side and the setup actually mattered and you had to spend time on it. You had to dedicate a proper amount of time to sorting that stuff out whereas in 420s it was all very much like chilled out laid back you just you went sailing you had fun there wasn't a lot else to it <laughs> um, and, and you need to know your setup work. you need to know your setup yeah, really you need well to as know well. well and get used to like the feel of, of different setups and find like the sweet spot um, whereas 420s it was sort of like we were just given a certain setup and we went went with that but there's a lot more experimentation involved with finding what's right for like your team, your type of boat, your mast, your falls, everything. It's yeah, very yeah, specific. We have a, a super enthusiastic coach uh, with Johnny. Oh, so yeah. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're having yeah, a lot Johnny's of fun. Johnny's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, one Johnny question from well. from outside. Uh, Rule 42. They've uh, they've lowered the the wind range uh, for Oscar flag. For the 470, I think I should probably ask Ryan. Well, what do you think of that? It looks pretty hard work to me. It's bloody hard work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's obviously, I mean, there are points when it does get a bit sort of ridiculous, and the the helms on the leeward side, and it's really difficult. But I do love like the aspect of the pumping brought into it because not only do we have to sail the boats really well, we have to set it up differently. And it's like a tool we use around the race course for like bad patches or if we want to attack a boat. Um, and if anyone has any doubt, it now it's now really, really physical. That, yeah, uh, it's got yeah. incredibly physical now. Um, and it is quicker to do it. So, yeah, no, it's uh, obviously hard work. And there's parts of it which I love and parts of it which is hard work. But that's part of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Well, it's thank great you. Thing, I <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, the, the helms, uh, yeah, I've seen it before where there's a, a real difference in the amount of clothing people are wearing because the, the crew's working like crazy in the in the light winds and strong strong sunshine, and the, and the helms wearing very little because they don't want to get get too yeah. too hot. But uh, it's true. Although on the downwind, it's like pretty. Sort of switches, yeah. Isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's we're sort of equally matched on the downwind. Um, when it's light with pumping, the whole like rocking and you have to move your body weight across the boat, so that that gets hard work for me too. <laughs> I mean, with a lower wind range, it feels like you have free pumping, as it were, in quite a quite a lot of conditions, um, because it, it's just uh, that little change from the previous set of rules seemed to bring in an awful lot of races. Because I, I watched the the worlds in Villa Bora, and there was a lot, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, no, there was a lot. It's, it's funny because I think the rule's been in for quite a while now. It's not like it's new or anything. It's just people have, I don't know, 
I think Johnny's video made it go viral. That's what I think happened. That video. That was a bad example of it, but yeah. We were basically doing an exercise where we were all hold, trying to hold really tight lanes. Um, Biggie in the middle. Yeah, basically. A fair, fair description, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, can you just tell us what you're what you're up to at the moment, Ryan? Because we were super pleased uh, to be able to grab you. Oh right, yeah. No, I'm just finishing off my basic training. So I'm here in ATC Winchester, uh, just to complete my Bravo course. Um, so that's 16 days. Um, so I'm basically an army reservist alongside the sailing. Um, yeah, no, it's been. I probably look very tired because I am. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I've been out in the field for a few nights and getting up at five thirty every day. So no, it's been it's been good fun. <laughs> I only thought there was one five thirty in a day. I didn't know there was one in the morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your no, no, Peter? Before we let you um, go, I am currently at home. Um, we've had quite a good break. So after the Europeans, Ryan pretty much went straight off to that. Um, after his five-day test, and then I've been helping out on the farm. Did some sheep work today, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, I, I have a farm as well. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, near Galway. Yeah. Weighing the lambs. <laughs> but, I always yeah, thought sweet. it was very hard to count sheep when it's been snowing. Okay, well, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> we um, also have been getting the boat ready. Um, to go, we've got a big block of training in Weymouth over June. We've got, I think, three or four camps down there, and I've been doing a bit of Elliot and J70 sailing as well in the meantime to fill the time while Ryan's away and get on the water because it's been actually it hasn't been great weather, but a few days have been nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, the uh, the Gulf Stream was the wrong side of the UK, but may maybe I'll see you in sunny Weymouth in in June. We're going to. Yeah. Go on to a few more slides, and then at the end of the show, we have a little bit of uh, coaching. Uh, so if you stay on the line, even though you can't be seen, I'm very happy to, um, I was going to say, I'm very happy to answer any questions. If you have any answers as well, that be, that's always good too. Okay. Sure. Right. Well, th well thank you. Well, thank you. we've got the uh, Soldiers Winter Series continuing. I think uh, it did appear like winter, didn't it, John, as you said, the... Uh, Gulf Stream was in the wrong place, but uh, I think it's moving this weekend. So uh, yeah, they've, they've been laughing at me in Villamora because uh, compared to the people who've been there for a long time, there's a quite a different amount of uh, clothing being worn. But there we go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have the rerunning of the Grafham Grand Prix this weekend. So uh, it looks like uh, good weather, but actually no wind. So uh, you can't win, can you? <laughs> Uh, that's the joys of joys of sailing, and that's also why, in terms of accommodation, it is good when we can have multiple day events. Uh, that make, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I think that's that's what we're seeing now. The you know as, as we move back to normality. Right. Okay. So moving on. So, uh, oh well, good good weather, Link. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm sure the four uh, seventies can uh, can definitely say about this. Being in Villamora, where we have we have a lot of uh, heating uh, in April May compared to the to the UK. And in sailing, it's quite a difficult sport because there's a lot of terminology. And I think I've probably been through this before, but it's one thing that I keep on hearing uh, that gets misused, and that's about stable conditions. And uh, wind stability has absolutely nothing to do with, and I'll repeat that, absolutely nothing to do with how much the wind is shifting. Um, and shifty wind is normally associated with uh, offshore uh, wind where the wind's going around lots of buildings etc um, but this idea of wind stability is about the heating you have so when you have big cumulus clouds and they're very very high that's the, the big sort of sheepy looking clouds that's lots of air mixing and that's the, the cold air coming down and the warm air going up and that's why the cloud is so tall and that shows the wind is very unstable so there's a lot of thermal mixing up and down up and down the stable air uh, we get in the uk often when it's very cold and you have a thick cloud cover very low and you probably can't even see the sun that's actually very stable air and you may well have that in a northeasterly so on the south coast it's shifty as you like but the air is 
very, very stable. And that means if a coach was at the Wimmer Mark and they took a wind reading, they will be able to tell a coach at the Leeward Mark exactly what wind speed and what wind direction to expect. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the real meaning of the word uh, stability. And the way you normally check it is by looking at the cloud. But basically, the more heating you have, the more unstable the conditions tend to be. So I hope that's a, a top tip for people um, because I think that's one of the quite misunderstood terms in sailing. Right, so good. So uh, moving on, like, um, that's what, two weeks time now. <laughs> yeah, so we have the wonderful Finn class uh, coming in and uh, that's going to be a really uh, interesting thought. We've got the uh, 2020 Olympic Games coming up. That's um, very much classy swan song, I guess, in, in a way. Um, and they just do a wonderful job for the, for the larger framed sailor. And it would be nice to see more in um, the UK clubs up and down the, the country. One of the things I really like about the Finn is uh, they have a very active master circuit. And uh, it'd be good to talk to John about that. And it was interesting, obviously, uh, a parallel talking to the Europe's last week in terms of uh, how they flourished actually outside the Olympics, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a case of, of hard work. I mean, for me, I think probably the class which has the best example is the star, which just seems to have gone from strength to strength since the left Olympic Games. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be great to um, chat to the film class. Good. So that's two weeks' time. Well, uh, thanks everyone much and uh, some good sailing ahead of it. Thank you. Cheers.